When we look at Dagestani fighters in the UFC, we often associate them with their Sambo-based fighting style that's focused on controlling opponents throughout the fight and finishing them from top position. The first people that come to mind when talking about the Dagestanis are Khabib Nurmagomedov, who's arguably the greatest UFC lightweight of all time, and Islam Makachev, the current UFC lightweight champion who might even surpass the legacy of Khabib. But there's one certain Dagestani fighter that didn't ground his fighting style around Sambo or wrestling. In fact, he actually preferred to strike with his opponents. To make matters even more confusing, he wouldn't go about it in a traditional boxing approach, but would instead root his striking using Kung Fu. And to top it all off, he was a top 3 UFC fighter in the world. The fighter that I'm talking about is none other than Zabit Magomed Sharipov, a former UFC fighter who, at the time, was considered a major contender for the UFC featherweight title. Unfortunately for Zabit, and all of us, his time would come to an end after his last fight in 2019 due to a series of health problems, opponents refusing to fight him, and a pandemic that didn't really help that much either. This led to his eventual retirement shortly after with the firm stance of no return. Given all of that, I thought this would be a great opportunity to revisit the career of Zabit by mixing in a more statistical approach and maybe find out what could have been had he not retired. Zabit was a very unique case in the UFC featherweight division back when he started in 2017. For one, he had one of the longest reaches in featherweight at 73 inches. This reach is actually just one inch short of Conor McGregor's reach, who also competed in the same weight class. But don't let the reach advantage distract you from the fact that Zabit was also one of the tallest featherweights in the UFC, standing at around 6 foot 1 and a half inches tall. And for a division whose average height is around 5'9 to 5'10, yes, this was really tall. All this is great and all, but we've seen fighters in the past that had similar physical attributes and not be able to reach the top of the division. Zabit, however, is not one of those fighters, and he used those attributes very well in his fights, keeping his opponents at jab range, or even worse, at his 42 inch kick range. Zabit's striking mostly consisted of utilizing his hands and kicks to keep his opponents back. But the other core component of his striking is what we remember him for, because a lot of times in Zabit's fights, he would kind of show off. He would throw spinning back kicks, wheel kicks, spinning back fists, and high kicks off the fence, all while maintaining a decent output of around four to six strikes per minute throughout most of his fights. Unfortunately, if we look at Zabit's significant strike distribution, it doesn't tell that same story, and actually makes it seem like he's just some ordinary featherweight, we can, however, draw some conclusions to explain some of the stats behind his striking. For example, you'll notice his body strike accuracy is actually pretty low, standing at around 59%, whereas fighters mostly tend to have this at around 70 to 80%. This actually can be explained because a lot of times, Zabit goes for spinning kicks to the body that don't actually land accurately. His head strike accuracy, however, is pretty self-explanatory, since fighters are mostly inaccurate with their head strikes. What about Sabit's strike defense though? Yeah, we know he's a great and creative striker, but is he all offense? Can Zabit also defend himself well? The answer is surprisingly, yes. Using his range, he normally tends to back away just enough to not receive any strikes from his opponents in the stand-up. Not only that, he also has a good ability to slip punches and roll away from shots at closer range. And as a result, if we look at Zabit's overall significant strike defense throughout his fights, you'll notice that his opponents on average tend to only land at a rate of around 36% on him. And even more impressive is Zabit's significant head strike defense, because if we look at that, then you'll notice that instead of his opponents landing at around 36% on him, they now average around 26%. Not only does this show that Zabit is an entertaining striker, it also shows he's defensively sound. That covers one aspect of Zabit's game in his fights, but I want to remind you all that Zabit is still a Dagestani, which means we'll have to look at his grappling as well. And for someone that has very creative striking, you would assume Zabit wouldn't have that same creativity in his wrestling or grappling. But that is very far from the truth. When Zabit's taking down his opponents, he'll do some of the basics like using a body lock to drag them down to the mats but a big chunk of his takedowns revolve around transitioning after catching kicks and some interesting trips that lead to a lot of ground control time. This might also help explain why his takedown accuracy is pretty good, since he keeps his opponents guessing on the takedown, 
And if you don't think a takedown accuracy of 56% is pretty good, then I'll refer back to some other notable Dagestanis that have worse or similar takedown accuracy. After taking his opponents down, Zabit also gets really good control of them by transitioning to dominant positions and maintaining them there. You'll see this if we look at his control time graph throughout his fights. You'll notice that Zabit actually gets a decent amount of control time against his opponents, but it did start to slow down as his competition started to get better. But despite that fact, his opponents weren't having that much success in controlling Zabit either. The worst it ever got for Zabit was actually in his first fight in the UFC, where he was controlled for around two and a half minutes. And when some of his opponents did get Zabit in a grounded position, he was quick to reverse them and resume his own control time. Zabit actually is a really technical and creative grappler. And on top of all of that, he even has some creative submissions under his belt too. And all this begs the question, had Zabit not retired, would he have captured UFC gold? At the time of Zabit's last fight, the UFC featherweight rankings looked like this, and he was poised to get a title shot sometime soon. If he had fought against Max Holloway, I could see it being a very entertaining fight, similar to Max's fight against Yair Rodriguez. But I think the grappling exchanges would have been the main difference in this fight, as Zabit has shown better grappling than Yair. In a fight against Zabit, Max probably would not be able to go to the ground as often as he did against Yair. Unfortunately though, I don't think Zabit would have won this fight, because despite his superior grappling and unorthodox striking, Zabit's gas tank does tend to wear out by the third round of his fights, and if he's scheduled to go 5 rounds, something he never did in the UFC, and against an elite striker with a 5 round gas tank like Max, it would probably start looking bad in the later rounds for Zabit. I can say similar things for Zabit had he also fought against Alexander Volkanovsky, although I do think it's a better matchup for him than Max. Once again, Volkanovsky has shown crazy strike output in the later rounds of his fights, whereas Zabit has shown chinks in his armor after getting hurt in his later rounds. However, with Zabit having such a big height and reach advantage, I could also see him presenting some more unique challenges to Volk, and maybe even KO him with a high kick in a similar way that Islam Makachev did at UFC 294. Despite being a fighter out of Dagestan, which most of us correlate to having elite level grappling skills, Zabit Magomed Sharipov not only shows that elite level grappling in his fights, but also shows a great ability to strike with his opponents, and shows a lot of creativity in the process. Had he stayed in the UFC roster, he probably would have captured the title, or at least challenged for it. And although I personally think his reign would have been cut short by a few featherweight stalwarts, he probably would have had some entertaining fights with them. Any additional charts that you see on screen right now will be available in the community post. If you like the content, consider subscribing, liking the video, and leaving a comment down below for discussion or video suggestions. And a reminder to please be respectful in the comments section. Have a Merry Christmas everyone, and I'll hopefully see you one more time before the end of year. Thank you.